are you doing today? Welcome to Checkpoint. It's your host, Pastor Ifoma Eze, and I'm here with something new. And I want to start by saying thank you for all that you do for us at Checkpoint. Thank you for like your liking our videos. Thank you for sharing our videos. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for sharing the links. Thank you for subscribing on my YouTube channel. Thank you for clicking on the notification bell. And because of all of these wonderful things you do, our message is reaching a wider audience and for this, I am indeed very grateful. So thank you, thank you, and thank you once again. All right, so now will be the time for you to invite your friends, your relations, your associates, and your neighbors. Let everyone know that Checkpoint is on right now. And I really can't wait to share what I have with you today. I'd like you to begin to invite everyone. Click on the link and share. Share it on your social media platforms let everyone know that it's time for checkpoint you know we bring you good stuff on checkpoint and that is why you have to invite everyone that you know so i am waiting for you to start the invitation start inviting them start sending the links everywhere calling your friends calling your relations calling your associates calling your neighbors let them know checkpoint is on right now all right so don't go away from this app remain where you are and i'll be back right after the break see you all right welcome back to checkpoint so today we have something very interesting that i want to share with you and i know in my heart it will be of immense value to you irrespective of wherever you found yourself in life so today i like you to be very attentive all right make sure there are no distractions around you because you want to get something that will be of immense value to you all right so have you invited your friends have you invited your relations have you invited your associates and have you invited your neighbors let everyone come along because it is time for checkpoint now i'd like to share my topic with you all right so the topic i'd like to share with you today is simple it's 10 things you should give up on <laughs> 10 things you should give up on did you get the topic oh i'm sure you had it let me say it all over again 10 things you should give up on you know one thing that is very very common on this particular program is that i'm always telling you you should not give up you should not give up all right you should not give in you should not give out and stuff like that but today i'd like to show you 10 different things that you should give up on i am saying that these are the things that you should stop doing you should stop are accepting it you should give, make up your mind that this is not for you because you want to succeed because you want to get better in life because you want to achieve greater heights in life there are certain things you have to give up on in order to achieve so today i'm showing you 10 different things you should give up on i don't know if you're out there but can you guess some can you guess before i share it all right so let me know what your guesses are in the chat room in the comment section go ahead and comment let me know what your guesses are what kind of things do you think you should give up in order to achieve what you want to achieve become all that you want to be and become the very successful person the better version of yourself that you want to be all right so i uh, why why you are guessing i'll leave you guessing but i'll go, i'm just going to go ahead and share with you the 10 different things you should give up on all right i know uh, most of them are things that i personally really have to give up on and i'm sure it will be of immense value to you if you learn the things that you also have to give up on are you ready all right so the number one thing that you have to give up on is the self-limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome self-limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome somehow they basically mean the same thing but they are a bit different now let me talk about it now self-limiting mindsets and beliefs are just those things that you believe that uh, limit you that make you not to become the very best version of yourself that you are to be now an example of a self-limiting uh, belief or mindset is something like 
I'm not good enough or, or I'm not qualified or people like me don't achieve this, okay? Where I come from, we are just behind. We don't get to heights like this, all right? So you don't have to fall for those self-limiting beliefs or imposter syndrome. That thing that makes you feel like you're not good enough, not qualified enough, not beautiful enough, not credible enough, not intelligent enough, these things are all limiting beliefs and we call it the imposter syndrome because they make you to approach your life approach opportunities as if you are not there as if you are not capable because there is a voice in your head that is constantly telling you things you cannot do give up on them give up on them give up on them give up on those voices in your head give up on those self-limiting beliefs and things that make you feel like you are not worth it like you are worthless listen to me you are worth it you are amazing you are incredible there is no other version of you here on earth you are a shining light you have come here on earth to shine your light your unique light your incredible light to this generation as a matter of fact a portion of us will be in darkness until your light begins to shine let me tell you you are the salt of the earth as a matter of fact life will lose its taste life will lose its flavor if you do not add your beautiful contribution to this earth so wake up sis wake up bro and do what god has laid in your heart to do don't allow those self-limiting mindset the self-limiting beliefs and those impulse syndrome to keep you back to hold you back as a matter of fact there are people who are doing incredible things well listen the challenge is not that they don't have those voices in their head but they know how to subdue those voices so you have to wake up and ensure that you have the capacity to subdue those voices and decide for yourself what is right for you believe me when i tell you you we are born in this into the generation in a time like this so that you can become an incredible asset not a liability you have great potentials within you potentials that your world is seeking for potentials that people out there need so wake up wake up stand up from where you are and begin to do something all right so what you have to give up on this year this period this moment is i have to give up on those self-limiting beliefs and the imposter syndrome did you get that all right so let's continue i'd like to talk about number two thing that you have to give up on and number two thing you have to give up on is past failures past failures or regrets past failures or regrets listen to me we all have failed in the past i must honestly tell you that i have had my own fair share of failures i have failed at different things i started there are things businesses i started that didn't really work out well there are things i started i could not really accomplish but listen to me beyond those past failures there are things i started that are really thriving there are things i'm doing that i am really very incredible at all right there are things i am doing that I, they are working and they are working very well as a matter of fact if i didn't do some of those things and failed at them possibly i will not know how to do some of these other things and sustain them every one of us have ha, we have one thing in our lives that we are not comfortable about one thing in our that ha, has happened in our own life or destiny that we are not okay with but then you, see, you know what we do not re rest on them we do not live there all right so what do we do we stand up from our past failures we brush off the dust from our lives and then we keep moving we keep getting better we keep moving forward even apostle paul in the bible said i forget all those things that are behind and i look forward to the excellency of the crown that has been promised me listen to me there is a future ahead of you there is beauty ahead of you there is glory ahead of you there is achievement ahead of you there are accomplishments ahead of you there is success ahead of you but listen to me you have to move yourself up and away from past failures from regress things that have the ability to hold you back you have to let them go listen i am talking to you 
That's right. You who is watching me now, you, yes, you are holding your phone and you are watching me right now. You are the one I am speaking to. Let go of past failures. You are not the only one who has failed before. People have failed in the past. I just told you about my own fair share of failures. Now, people have failed in the past, but it's not about the failure. It's about what you make out of it. Thomas Edison, you worked on the candescent light bulb 10,000 times. He got it right at the 10,000th time. Journalists and, and, and news people came to meet him and they asked him, why, why, why did you have to fail so many times? Why did you? He said, no, 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 don't call them failures. I just discovered 9,999 ways through which the incandescent light bulb will not work. So please, if you have failed before, go shoot again. If you have failed before, go try again. If you have failed before, go write again. Just keep doing what it is that you have failed before at. But listen to me, in as much as I want you to do it again, make sure that you study why you failed. Find out what you did not know that made you fail. Find out the information that was not at your disposal that made you fail. And then go back and implement those things. Add those values. Increase on your knowledge on, and your capacity. And then do it again. Because listen to me. It is only a foolish person that will keep doing the same thing repeatedly and will want a different result. So you want a different result from the time you fail. So what are you going to do? You go back. You find out what went wrong, you work on it, improve on it, and then do it again. And be rest assured, when you do it again, you will come out with a better result. You can't be slacking, you can't be dulling, you can't be stuck in one place with one old mistake you made. Listen to me, it's just a mistake. And that mistake is not final. You are not your mistake. Your mistake is not you. Let me say that again so that it can sink in into your mind. You are not your mistake and your mistake is not you. It's just a mistake. What do you do? Brush off the sand from your body. Brush off the dust and the shame from your body. Stand up and go and shine your light. Go and become everything that God has asked you to do and to become. Don't, don't wait behind and then you're asking, oh, this is not happening, that is not happening, that is not what you ought to do, all right? So you have to wake up and shine your light. You have to wake up and become the very best version that God has wanted you, has designed you to be. So, regrets. Regrets happen when things don't really work out the way we want it to work out. And when it does like this, we become so unhappy. But I would like to tell you something today. Please forgive yourself let me say this again please forgive yourself forgive yourself many of us we can even forgive others but we find it very hard to forgive ourselves if you have done something in the past that is that is like stopping you from achieving what you want to achieve today what the first thing you have to do is i have you have to forgive yourself forgive yourself you are a human being for crying out loud and human beings make mistakes you are not the first human being that's going to make mistakes, neither will you be the last. So forgive yourself. Let it go. All right? Let it go. And then no, number two, you have to forgive others. Whoever it is in your past that contributed to your failure, that contributed to the regret you currently face, forgive and let go. All right? Forgive and let go. People usually say forgive and forget, but I, I don't know if it's actually realistic to really forget because when somebody does something to you, I don't believe you have dementia. So somehow you are still able to remember what the person has done to you, but then you don't remember it with a lot of pain and bitterness and resentment, right? Because that is how we know you have truly forgiven so when you forgive forgive sincerely forgive from your heart and let it go all right don't allow yourself to remember what the person has done to you don't allow yourself to remember the heart with the same intensity that you felt that you had that pain in the first instance so forgive yourself and forgive others let me say that again forgive yourself and forgive others it's a mistake we are all humans and it's commonly said that to of air is human and to forgive is divine so forgive all right forgive let it go and then push on with your life because you have something greater ahead of you all right let me tell you number three thing that you really have to give up on remember we're talking about things you have to give up on and number three thing you have to give up on is excuses give up on excuses 
give up on excuses there are many of us who are so filled with excuses and one thing i can tell you is that if you keep making excuses one day you might see yourself accusing yourself so stop making excuses so that you don't accuse yourself stop making excuses some of us will say oh the time is never sufficient the time is never sufficient listen to me it was the same time that was given to those who do, did great exploits in life that was given to you mark zuckerberg has exactly the same amount of time that you have the Wright brothers who created the, the airplane, they had the same amount of time that you had. People, great people uh, that have done incredible things here on earth had the same amount of time that you currently have. So stop saying the time is not enough, the time is not enough. All you have to do is just to restructure yourself, plan your program, all right, work things out in a way that you are able to utilize your time properly. Stop making excuses. You don't have time. You don't have time. Can I tell you something? You have time for anything you truly value. Let me say that again. You have time, you, 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 you produce time, you develop time, you make time for everything you truly value. Have you had some people in your life who say, um, there's no time to call you, there's, I, I usually don't have time to reach out to you? Listen to me. There are people in their lives that they are making out time for. And as a matter of fact, if someone does not make out time for you, it simply means that you are not important to that person. If somebody does not make out time for you, it simply means that you are not important to that person. So what do you do? Move on with your life and look for those who consider you important. Very, very key. Very, very important. Stop saying I don't have time. I don't have time. You truly have time for what you care about. Another excuse people usually make is that they always say, um, it's too late to learn. It's too late to learn how to do this. It's too late to do this. It's too late to learn. Listen to me. Let me tell you. It is never too late and you are never too old. Let me say that again. It is never too late and you are never too old. Let me say it one more time so that it sinks into your mind. It is never too late and you are never too old. It is not too late for you to go back to school. It is not too late for you to uh, start that new career. It is not too late for you to start that new business. It is not too late for you to write your book. It is not too late for you to learn that skill. It is not too late for you to sing that song. It is not too late for you to be in love again. It is not too late for you to find somebody who can value you for who you truly are. It is never too late. That's why a, a book of mine that will be coming out very soon, the title is, Is It Really Late? Is It Really Late? That book is going to be a huge blessing to you. Wait for it. When it's out, I'll let you know. All right? So let's stop making excuses about why we can't do a particular thing. Oh, it's because I'm too fat. Oh, it's because, it's because I'm too ugly. Oh, it's because I'm not learned. Oh, it's because I'm too fair. Oh, it's because I'm too dark. Listen to me. It's not because of anything. Stop making excuses. Give up on excuses. Give up on excuses. Don't let those excuses hold you down. Don't let them pin you down in one place. Don't let them become a defining factor for your life. I know you don't have money. I know you don't have data. You don't have, I know all of that. You don't have access to internet. You are in a, living in a local place. All of this is are very genuine excuses, but you cannot allow them to stop you. There's always a way around it. I believe, I always believe that there's always a way to do everything. There's always a way around it. There's always a, another solution. There's a plan B if plan A fails. There's a plan C if plan B fails. There's a plan D if plan C fails. Always make a way. Always make a way. All you have to do is just have a very positive mindset and a, an ability to think thoroughly. So stop giving excuses. We all have excuses. A particular woman said, oh, I cannot pursue my dreams and pursue my career because I'm a mother. Listen to me. Being a mother does not mean that you have to lose out on a beautiful opportunity to fulfill your purpose. No. You can be a mother and still fulfill your purpose. You can be a mother and still be an effective career woman. You can be an amazing mother and still be a CEO. 
Stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. Some men will say, the reason why I'm not married is because I've not seen money. Listen to me, I know. Especially as it relates here in Nigeria and in Africa, we need money, serious money to like get married to the person that we want to get married to. But listen to me, it's not always about money. Where there is a will, there is a way. You have to make up your mind first and foremost. Make up your mind and then walk around it. There is always away there is always a way there's somebody to meet there is a negotiations to make there are steps to take and some people will say oh I, I don't want to i don't have enough money that's why i'm not yet married i'm waiting for when i'll have all the money to get married listen to me you may not have all that money in order to get married as a matter of fact i have seen this happen before my eyes several times we have people do not really have all the money but they fix the date and somehow the date came and the date passed and they were married simply because they took a leap of faith. You have to go beyond your excuses and start doing things that are in your heart. You have to go beyond your excuses and start fulfilling your purpose. You have to go beyond your excuses and become the version that God has created and designed you to be. All right. So having gotten that, I like you to. I like us to talk about number four. Number four. Um, thing you should give up on remember that our topic today are 10 things you should give up on and number one we've talked about giving up on self-limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome we talked about number two giving up on past failures or regrets and we talked about number three giving up on excuses and number four we're going to talk about give up on the need for perfection give up on your need for perfection there are people no, not like me, because <laughs> I don't say you like me. You know, there, there are people who, especially melancholies, if, if you have a, 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 a shade of melancholic uh, temperament within you, you want things to be perfect. You want to be in control of things. As a matter of fact, you don't want this particular thing to be there. You don't want this to be there. You want everything to be perfect. But listen to me, even the best of us are not perfect. Even the best of us are not, a, are not perfect. The best of us is still a human being. And human beings are prone to error. Human beings are prone to mistakes. So, this need for perfection, I want to get it all right. I want to appear perfect. In reality, it doesn't just work like that. All you have to do is to focus on just doing your best. Focus on doing your best. Do your best. In that book, do your best. In that song, do your best. In, in your family life, do your best. In your work, your job, do your best. Just do your best. And my defin your definition of my best today cannot be the, your definition of my best tomorrow because I am evolving every day. So say to yourself, you are evolving. You are evolving. What was your best last year cannot be your best this year. You are getting better every day. You are getting better every day. That should be your philosophy. That should be your, your slogan. That should be what, something that you should practicalize all the time. So, just destroy that need to be perfect. You can't impress people for long. You can't impress everyone, as a matter of fact. You can't impress everyone. You can't please everyone. So, be your genuine self. Be the best version of yourself. Don't engage in any form of competition with anybody. There's no competition in destiny. In this life, in the work we do, in the job you do, in the life you are living, there is no competition. So just work hard. Improve on yourself. Try to be better, but listen to me. Don't bother about being perfect. As a matter of fact, our definition of perfect is different. What I call perfect might be just the kind of life I'm having now. You might look at it and you may not like it. But then it's my own definition of perfect. Let's not try to become perfect based on another person's definition. Many of us will look at ourselves and we're like, no, there's a, there's a mark on my face. No, there's a, 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 some extra fat on my body. No, therefore I'm not perfect. Mm -mm. If you say you are perfect, you are perfect. So stop looking for that extreme need for perfection. You think that if you become a certain way, everybody will get to like you. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. So make up your mind to just do your best. Make up your mind to just be your best. Make up your mind to study your best. 
there would always be somebody somewhere who is better than you at a particular area of your life there would always be that person and that person does not have to be a competition for you all you have to do is just to focus on what it is that god has asked you to do do it do it better keep improving every day no one is perfect let me say this again no one is perfect or let me put it in another way my definition of perfect is not a definition of perfect so i can say oh i have a perfect marriage oh i have a perfect look oh i have a perfect uh, job oh i have a perfect career oh i have because our definitions of perfect is different so whatever works for you please go ahead and do that just uh, uh hush that need of uh, to be perfect oh you're trying to make sure that this is that listen to me in this world we have found ourselves in even if you die trying to please people they will come to you and say why do you die like that you do not die very well <laughs> hey they'll say you do not die very well why did you die like that so you cannot please people forever you cannot please everyone just try to be the best version of yourself. Just keep improving on yourself. Keep working on yourself. You may not be perfect in their eyes, but you are perfect in God's eyes. That's the beautiful thing. So while we are pursuing, while we are giving up on our need to be perfect before people, we are perfect in the eyes of our Father. The one who has created you sees you as perfect. The one who has made you sees you as perfect. So please just go ahead, bask in that understanding, bask in that new uh, knowledge that you are perfect before the eyes of your father. All right. So let's talk about number five. Number five thing that you have to give up on is expecting too much from people. Expecting too much from people. Oh, we live in a world where uh, some people who just want, okay, I, 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 I expect this person to do this. I expect that person to do this. There are people in your life, people around you that you may have had a relationship with, or even you may have invested so much in. And because you have invested so much in them, because you have a close relationship with them, you expect them to behave in a certain way. You expect them to do certain things in some certain ways. And when they don't, you see yourself becoming very disappointed you see yourself becoming uh, very resentful towards them and you begin to harbor and bottle up all of this resentment that is not going to do you any good i have a word for you today expect less from people in fact somebody said don't expect too much from people so that you will not be disappointed and i think it's a very very uh, good way to live don't expect too much from people no matter how much you have invested in a person, they will disappoint you. No matter how much you give a person, they will disappoint you. No matter how much you pay a person as an employer, you will still see your employer leaving the organization. The fact that they are with you is because a certain part of uh, need in their lives are being met. And believe you me, when that need, they, when they feel that that need is not being met anymore, they can move on to another person. You feel so much disappointment because you expect too much. And I'm telling you, don't expect too much from people. I know you want to see their, the best from them. I know you want to see them keeping to their promises. I know you want to see them uh, 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 imputing back the value, uh, rewards for the value that you have put placed in them. But calm down, all right? <laughs> Let me say it again. Just calm down. You need to calm down. Most people you invested in might end up being the ones who will hurt you so much. Most people you gave to might end up being the people you would that, that would disappoint you equally. The truth of the matter is that no people will disappoint you. People will disappoint as long as you are dealing with people, they will disappoint you. A father can disappoint you, a mother can disappoint you, your siblings can disappoint you, your friends can disappoint you, even your relations can disappoint you, your neighbors and associates at your workplace, they all can disappoint you. People, your mentees, this is for mentors now. 
Even your mentees can disappoint you. You may have picked up a particular young man or a particular young woman, invested so much in them, bless them, help them, encourage them, giving to them. And then when they seem like they are very okay, they might will just wake up and leave you. Some of them will even leave without a message. Some of them will even leave without contact. Some of them will cut off from you entirely. Oh, believe you me when I tell you, I have had my own fair share of experiences in this area. And then if I say, oh, I'm not going to invest in another person. I'm not going to teach another person. I'm not going to instruct another person. What kind of person will I eventually become? Because my life is supposed to shine light to other people, add salt to other people. And when I'm not giving out that light or giving out that salt, what of what use am I to my generation? So you see, I had to raise myself up from those levels of regrets and pains and hurts and challenges and disappointments and then made up my mind that no matter what happens, I will keep giving. No matter what happens, I will keep giving because an ocean does not ever get dry of water. Let me say that again. An ocean never gets dry of water. If you're an ocean, just keep giving fresh water because that's who you are. That's who you are. If you allow what people have done to stop you from doing what you are doing, oh my, you will become a shadow of yourself. I want to encourage you. I've been there so many times. I have, I have raised a lot of pastors' wives who rose up and they don't even want to speak to me at all for reasons that I don't even know. But then, what do I then do? Do I say, oh, I don't want to raise other pastors' wives? No. I am a raiser by the grace of God. God has given me the grace to raise other people. So what do I do? I keep raising. Do, when they come, good, fine. When they don't come, good, fine. We keep raising. You know, Apostle Paul came to a point where he talked about one Alexander, the copper smith, and Demas, who had, who had Alexander, who had do, uh, done him much evil, uh, Demas, who had left him and departed and, uh, uh, and fell in love with the present world. All of those people, he kept mentioning their names. But well, listen to me, he did not stop him from raising the Timothys, from raising the Titus, from writing letters to all the churches in all the, the, those places. He did not stop. Don't let the disappointment of people stop you from being good. Goodness is in you. That's who you are. You can't change for them. Don't let the disappointment keep you. Don't let the disappointment stop you. You are better than this. Don't allow them to change who you are. Because you are a good person. And the evil that others have done to you will not make you to stop being a good person. Do you get it now? All right. So that's it. Another thing you have to give up on is expectation. Too much expectation from people. Too much expectations from people. All right. Let's talk about number six. Number six thing that you should give up on. Number six is worry. Give up on worries. Give up on worries. Give up on worries. I feel like uh, I, could, I could just... Uh, uh, pass through your, your screen and then tap you on the shoulder and tell you stop worrying. Stop worrying. Worrying does not do you any good. Worry does not change anything. Worry does not make you better. Rather, it makes you bitter. Don't worry about things that you cannot change. As a matter of fact, it is wisdom for you not to worry about what you cannot change. It is wisdom for you not to worry about what you cannot change. Because in all honesty, your worry is not going to change it. So why worry? <laughs> I, I like if, you, I, if you've been watching and listening to this point, I like you to just type in the chat room in the comment section, why worry? Why worry? <laughs> why worry? Uh, let me tell you something. Something you may not have known. My husband, when he was not yet married to me, when he was a young person uh, in the university, he used to live in a lodge that is called Why Worry? So, um, I'm asking you today, why worry? I, I don't know what uh, made the owner of the lodge to uh, label his lodge the name, why worry? But I want to believe that it really helped lots and lots of people, especially in the way they behave, the way they live their lives. Because a time will come when was, somebody will have to say, I live at why worry? So, why do I have to worry? All right, so stop worrying. We have a lot of worries. Many of us are worried, worried about the situation of the economy, 
the situation of our country, things that are not really working well, but worrying will not change it. All we have to do is just to begin to do better. If I do better and I do better within my family and we do all do better as a family, we do better as a society, eventually our country will be better. Worrying is not going to change a thing. That's why we have to stop worrying. That's why we have to stop worrying. Many of us are worried about inflation. Things are so costly. Things are so expensive. And we are worried. Oh, how are we going to make ends meet? How are we going to uh, uh, feed our families? How are we going to provide our basic needs? Well, listen to me. And somebody might be telling me, if I don't worry, what else can I do? But there are other things you can do apart from worry. You see, when you're thinking constructively and looking out for uh, opportunities to make money, other streams of income, and you're looking for how to diversify your income stream, you're looking at how to improve on what you are doing, these are more uh, constructive ways to work it out. All right, Worry does not help a thing. Even the Bible tells us not to worry. God said in his word that we should not worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what we're going to uh, 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 wear on our bodies. He said even the birds of the air, they are clothed, they are taken care of. All right. So we have the heavenly father who wants to take care of us and he's taking care of us. All right. So just know that worry is not going to solve any problem. Don't worry about how to make more money because in reality, if you think through, if you think better, all right, look for workshops, videos uh, that are very uh, uh, eye-opening that can help you. Like uh, some time ago, I shared on 20 business ideas that you can start with almost no money. These are videos and other videos that can really help improve your life. Go ahead and get those videos and enjoy them and watch them, right? Okay, so these are other ways, constructive things to do instead of worry because worry doesn't change a thing worry doesn't change a thing you have to uh, move past that level of worry and begin to think constructively on how to better your life and nothing people worry about is the future oh what's going to happen in my future what's going to uh, uh become of my future but let me tell you something do you know that many of us worry so much about our future that we miss out on the present life I really need to say this again for the benefit of somebody watching me right now. Many of us worry about our future so much so that we miss out on this very life that we have received. This life that you have is a, one, a, a once upon a time opportunity. So what are you doing with it? Are you worrying the whole way into old age? Or are you making productive use of this life that you have? As a matter of fact, while you work, also work to be happy. Also make sure you are happy. Also make sure you are fulfilled. All right, you can't cry throughout life. You don't have another life to live. You have only one life here on earth. So what do you do? Make good use of it. Try to be happy through it all, all right? Many of us are filled with worry about not having that we forget the little things we have. You know one thing the devil usually does? He makes us to focus on all the things that we don't have and then we begin to miss out on what we currently have. There is something you currently have. There is something that's currently working in your life. Stop focusing on the things that are not working in your life right now. There is something that is currently working very well in your life. Can you focus on that one that is working well in your life? Can you focus on that right now and then forget about all the other things that are not working in your life because as you begin to focus on what is working in your life you feel yourself with positive vibes and these positive vibes will eventually help you to ascend into higher heights in life and in destiny so please don't allow anything to kill your joy all right while you are alive be happy be joyful all right all right so make sure that you're enjoying this one life that you currently have because you don't have a spare life many of us are so worried about will i get married in the future that you miss out on your singlehood now listen to me you are only single you're not stupid as long as you are single and enjoying this single life 
Please be productive while single. Be happy while single. Enjoy your life while you are single, all right? When I say enjoy your life, I actually mean you should live right, all right? I didn't say you should enjoy your life like you start living any kind of worthless kind of life. You don't want that. So enjoy your life. Be happy with your life. Look for productive things to do. And there are some privileges you have being single. You can travel the world. You can go to anywhere you want to go to. You can do several things you want to do now because you are not yet married. Don't allow the thoughts for the future limit you from enjoying your current life let me say this again don't allow worry and thoughts of your future limit your current life enjoyment so enjoy your life where you currently are enjoy the happiness you have now enjoy the freedom you have now and um, while you do that you can now wait for the opportunities that will present themselves for you in the future another thing that we worry about is that sometimes we are unsatisfied with our body so Somebody is out there saying, oh, I'm too short. My problem is that I am really short. Listen to me. Can you change your height? By worrying, the Bible, even the Bible tells us that by worrying, we cannot add one cubit to our height. We cannot add one, one, one head to our head. So please, worrying about you, that you are short is not going to help your life. Worrying that you are short is not going to improve. It's a fact. It's not going to change anything. So somebody's out there worrying, oh, I'm too short, uh, what can I do? People don't like me because I'm short. Of, as a matter of fact, you cannot do anything about your height. This is who you are and what you are at the moment. So and find ways to enjoy it and be happy with it. So people say, okay, uh, 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 I have issues, I'm too tall. It's either you're too short or you're too tall. Different issues in life. But what I want to tell you is that don't be unsatisfied with your body. Are you slim? Love your body. Are you fat? Love your body. Are you short? Love your body. Are you tall? Love your body. Don't and don't don't find that find yourself in that habit of always uh, uh, being unhappy with your body, worrying about your body. Oh, I'm, see, as a matter of fact, I have discovered that when people have uh, excess weights that they want to destroy, worrying about it does not help. What actually helps is doing something practical about your weight. So when you say, I'm worried about this weight and you're not doing anything physical to reduce the weight, then it's a problem. When you say, I'm worried about my size, I'm too slim and you're not doing anything about it, then it's a problem. So don't worry. Rather, do something constructive about what you are feeling. I hope this is blessing you. Yeah, I hope you're getting strong value from this program because remember at checkpoint we equip you we em educate you we empower you and we encourage you to become the very best version of yourself so don't miss out on what i'm sharing with you today because it's going to be very very helpful all right so let's talk about number seven number seven thing you should give up on are relationships that are not working Give up on relationships that are not working. I've heard people who are in relationships say something like, I am the only one doing everything to make the relationship work. I am uh, the one who is always trying to make sure that things are, are okay in this relationship. I'm the only one calling. I'm the only one reaching out. I'm the only one loving. I'm the only... It's not supposed to be like that. Every relationship takes two to tango. It takes two to make a relationship work work so what are you going to do when you have found yourself in a midst of relationships that are not working i know it is hard for us to let go so many of us think that holding on makes us strong but in reality it is letting go that makes us strong let me say this again many of us think many of us assume that holding on to makes us strong but sometimes your strength can be this needed strength you need is the strength to let go so it is not every relationship that you should put your head and remain there till you die i've told you times and time again about the relationship i found myself in at a particular time in my life and i discovered i was the only one calling i was the only one reaching out i was the only one trying to make it work he wouldn't even visit uh, unless he had something important to do around my area and i looked at myself i was like what is this okay you have not even seen my nakedness um we've not done anything uh and you're already tired like this early morning i have to tell myself mm, this relationship has to end because I value myself too much. I value myself. I value myself. I can't just uh, 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 
keep work, uh, stressing on a relationship that is not working. So I had to give up on that particular relationship. Now some people who are married will be listening to this and they're like, oh, should we give up on our marriage when it's not working? My answer is no. Don't give up on your marriage when it's not working. There are other ways to make it work. But for a relationship, if you start like that, if that's the foundation upon which you start your relationship, it's likely going to be how the relationship is going to uh, thrive over time is going to uh, uh, exist over time and you don't want that so relationships are not working don't force it i there's a particular lady i i know of the guy in, in the relationship told her that um uh, i'm no longer interested in you i don't love you anymore and then you know what the lady did the lady went to fake pregnancy and then came to the guy and said oh i'm pregnant for you uh so therefore you have to marry me and this guy has boldly declared to you that he does not love you anymore but yet you went ahead and said oh no what, what am i going to do with relationship of all of these months no you have to marry me she went and faked their pregnancy and came into his life as i speak with you today that relationship is not working because when she faked the pregnancy eventually while she was faking the pregnancy Will I say, was it love? Fortunately or unfortunately, I don't even know we had to categorize this, but then she actually now got pregnant. But she got pregnant and she entered into a relationship, a, an unhappy marriage. As I speak with you, they are no longer married, all right? They are no longer married because the, the, she entered into a relationship where there is no love. And there is no love, there is no willingness to make it work. The relationship collapsed and got destroyed so you don't have to do this to yourself if a relationship is not working please let it be being strong is not only holding on to being strong is also letting go off you should be wise enough to know when to hold on to a relationship and when to let it go especially when it is not working let it go there are people in your life this may not be romantic relationships now there are people in your life who are friends who are colleagues at work, bosses and mentors and mentees and the relationship, you notice it is no longer working, all right? You are not, both of you are not happy in, in the relationship, uh, uh, things are going wrong, there's a lot of accusation, there's a lot of suspicion, there's a lot of uh, false accusation and stuff like that and it's no longer healthy. A time comes when a relationship gets to a very toxic state. You don't want to be in that kind of negative environment, all right? Because those negative vibes can create a lot of negativity in your life. So know when to let go of a relationship that is no longer working. It is my desire that your relationship works, but you need that wisdom to also know when this relationship is no longer working and when to let go because this is very, very important there are people you have seen all the available red flags in fact these red flags are turning to red banners they are turning to red billboards and signboards all right they, they are they are waving hard on your face but you don't want to take it serious you are hoping that he changes you are hoping that she changes you are hoping that something happens and then they become somebody else they are not listen to me you have to let go of that relationship okay because you don't want to leave those red flags are just a warning when you actually get married it's going to be worse than flags all right ah be rest assured they in a relationship with a guy and you are not yet married and he's already beating you he's already giving you injury on your body and you're like, oh, don't worry, he was just angry. I was really the one who made him angry. You know, because I made him angry, he deserves to, like, express his anger on me. What nonsense. What rubbish. You should wake up from that sleep. -o. Wake up from that slumber. So that you don't die in marriage. It is not God's desire that even sinners should die. How much more of you? God does not desire that you die in the hands of another person in marriage. So, please, there are red flags everywhere. You are in a relationship as a guy and you're in a relationship with a lady and then that lady, she spends everything. She spends money. She, she, every money that comes into her hand, she spends all of it. And then you are watching. What do you think is going to happen in marriage? Oh, all of a sudden, her head will just autocorrect and then she will not start saving. Oh, no. She's going to squander all your life savings. So, these are red flags. You need to work on them ahead of time. I want to tell every young man who is listening to me, 
When you consider that that lady is going to join you in making the, your, your future children, you have to uh, be careful, all right? Don't when, consider your children when you're making a choice of a woman to marry. Don't just marry somebody who is just all beauty and has no brains, all beauty and has no sense. Consider the future of your children. For ladies too, I say the same thing. When you want to get married and you're looking at that guy, consider the future of your children when you're making a decision of who their father will be. Don't give your children a father who is a striker, a father who is a bully. Consider the future of your children when making the decision of who to marry. Whether you are male, whether you are female, consider the future of your children when making a decision of who to marry. You want to marry a lady and she's just all fine and she knows nothing. Consider the fact that your children will need to do homework at home. I do not want them to be failing all the time. So please, if we think ahead of tomorrow, we'll make better decisions today. All right. So that's taken. I hope that point is taken. Remember, I'm talking about 10 things you should give up on. And number one, we talked about you should give up on self-limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome. We said number two, you should give uh, up on past failures and regrets. We said number three, you should give up on excuses. Number four, you should give up on the need to be perfect. Number five, you should give up on expecting too much from people. We said number six, you should give up on worries. And then I told you that number seven, uh, you should give up on relationships that are not working. Now, let's talk about number eight. Number eight thing that you have to give up on are limiting and unhealthy habits. Limiting and unhealthy habits. There are habits in your life that are very unhealthy. There are habits in your life that are limiting you. And you have to give up on those habits. Some of you have this habit of negative self-talk. Before you do anything, before you're always saying negative things to yourself. So somebody asks you, how are you doing? Say, hmm, I just did manage you. So I say, how are you? How, is, how, how are you doing today? Say, hmm, I'm not doing well at all. All right, so some of this negative self-talk, there are things you need to eliminate from your vocabulary. They need to go entirely. All right, so those negative self-talk, telling yourself you are not worthy, you are not enough, you are not capable, you are not strong enough, you are not beautiful enough, you are not cute enough, you are not intelligent enough, you are not, because uh, your father and your mother abandoned you, you are uh, not useful to anybody. No. Eliminate those habits. Start switching those negative self-talk and start switching it to empowering words. Words that empower you. Look at, at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I am beautiful. Look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I am handsome. I am intelligent. I am bright. I am smart. I am capable. I am worthy. I am worthy of love. I am capable of giving love and receiving love. I am capable of fulfilling my dreams. I have potentials within me that I can do. Look at the mirror and tell yourself all of that. All right? So, there are habits in our lives, and one of them we have to eliminate is what? Negative self-talk. And the habit you have to eliminate is laziness and procrastination. Many of us say, today I'll do this. Thing. Tomorrow comes, and then it's not done. Many of you, tomorrow never ends for you. Tomorrow you will say, <laughs> tomorrow you say, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow again you say, I'll do it tomorrow. You know that friend? Think of, of it. Please don't tag anybody. <laughs> don't tag anybody at this moment. You know that friend? That always tells you tomorrow I'll do it and never really gets it done. I like you to tell the person to come watch this video right now. There are habits that we have to let go. We have to destroy those habits so that we can become better, so that we can do better for ourselves, so that we can improve, all right, so that we can achieve our dreams. And the habit you have to give up on is like a habits of junk food, all right. Many of us eat plenty junk. You are always drinking one soda or the other, eating stuff you shouldn't be eating. And then, <laughs> please, if you are that one and you're watching me right now, I know you are already feeling guilty. You feel like I'm already calling your name. You feel like this is personal. Yes, you. Please cut down on your junk. I know once in a while you can take something that you really like to take, but don't make it a regular habits okay don't make it a regular habit once in a while you can take some things take some snacks take some soda but just let's make it once in a while don't make it like a habitual thing because it's really not good 
for your health all right and the habit that we that for some of us is no longer at habit level it has entered addiction level right so you're addicted to some things you're addicted to drugs to television you're addicted to uh, uh, uh some particular drinks or stuff like that you, you drink you you don't you can't stop drinking until you are drunk you are smoking and stuff like that are your drugs all of those things are not good for your health there are people that are addicted to sexual immorality they can't they have they feel they have no control over it but i believe they have control how i know is this if you see that person who says i'm addicted to always having sex with everybody i meet please tell the person to go and have sex with somebody who has hiv the person will run away they will run for their dear life they will fight they, every sexual urge within them will just dry up immediately simply because they have that information which tells me that they are able to control it so it's just a, a function of decision i've seen people say please pray for me so i'll change this habit but in reality beyond the prayer i would ever pray for you what you need is decision decision is stronger than prayer in this aspect listen to me you can receive prayers from anybody that you want from no matter how high up the person is if you refuse to make a decision to stop that negative habit it will continue so limiting habits and unhealthy habits are things you have to make strong decisions against when you make that decision to start waking up early that decision not to oversleep that decision to eat right that decision to work on yourself that decision to exercise that decision to uh, be productive whatever it is that decision you have made make up that your mind make that decision and when you make that decision you see it's working out it's everything is all about prayer and then if you if you're addicted already to something ask for help never be ashamed to ask for help let me tell you many people think that asking for help is a sign of weakness but asking for help is a show of strength asking for help is a show of strength so go ahead ask for help and when you ask for help ask for help in the right quarters ask for help from the right people because if you ask for help from the wrong people oh your situation might be worse than how it was before you even asked for help i hope this helps you I hope I'm helping you. All right. So I'm really excited about this because every opportunity to improve uh, the life of other people, to contribute positively to the life of other people is something I always love to do. Let's talk about number nine. Let's talk about number nine thing you should give up on. You should give up on your need to be understood. <laughs> Mm, you should give up on your need to be understood. Have you ever felt like you're the most misunderstood person on earth? Some people are, feel that way, especially when they're very gifted and very creative, you feel easily misunderstood. There are some of us who, no matter what we do, people will never understand us. So if you fall into that category where you feel like you're always being misunderstood, people don't understand you, please give up on your need to be understood. There are people that will never understand you. And people that they will, I see what I heard about you. A day will come in your life when you see that you have overgrown some things. When somebody comes to you and they said, see what I heard about you, said, hmm, it is true. <laughs> whatever it is, believe whatever you want to believe. All right? So stop all this issue of trying your, your stress of trying to defend yourself, trying to explain it to yourself. Listen to me. There are people that will never understand you, even if you explain yourself. Let me say this again. There are people that will never understand you, even if you explain yourself hundred times. They have made up their minds to misunderstand you. So what do you do? Just live your life. Give up on the need to be misunderstood. Give up on the need to be misunderstood. Don't keep trying to explain yourself, explain to yourself. Listen to me. Uh, you may have never, how many of you remember this particular story about a man and his wife and their child? And they had a, a particular uh, horse they were riding. Now, the man and his wife, they were walking on, on, on feet and they kept their child on the horse. And a particular set of people met them and said, Oh, this boy, you are a very wicked child. Why are your parents striking and you are the one on the horse? Now the parents now uh, uh, took the the mother now joined the child on the horse and they continued on their journey. And somebody met them all like, wow, this is how women kill men and men live shorter lives. Why is it that men are always dying and living widows everywhere? You see, this is what you so you want to kill your husband. Why is the husband walking on feet and then two of you are up there in the horse? This man looked 
and the wife said, please, I don't want to kill my husband, just to um, please the people. She came down and she was carrying her child and the man was now on the horse. And as we were walking, they met another group of people and they said, hey, what kind of irresponsible man is this? So you mean that your wife is on walking and she's carrying your child and you, you are just there or balancing on top of the horse? What kind of wicked man are you, an irresponsible man? Are you not supposed to protect them? Are you not supposed to be a father? This man said, I don't even know what else to do. Do you know? This man said, okay, let me carry uh, the, the child. And as the, long as they kept switching places, nobody who met them on the way understood them. So please, sometimes come to that point when you do what you know is right in your heart and what you know pleases God. If you've done these things and you know that what you're doing is not offending any other human being directly, please go ahead and do what you're doing because you may never be understood. And as I begin to wrap up this wonderful program and this wonderful episode, I'd like to share with you number 10. Number 10 uh, thing you should give up on is being irresponsible. You know, I have talked about you not worrying and you not uh, living based on your past failures and, and regrets, but it is important, very important that you are not responsible. So give up on not being responsible. Some people are always saying, oh, God is going to do this for me. God is going to do that for me. But listen to me, any situation that makes God the only one solely responsible responsible in a particular thing is an irresponsible kind of situation. See, God will do things for you, but God needs you to play a part to make sure it happens. When God gave us the Holy Spirit, he did not take away our brain. So I want you to know that in as much as God is willing to help you, God is ready to help you. There is a role that you have to play. There is something that you have to do in order to make it work. So don't go and start sleeping all through. And then you know your exam is coming up. You say, oh, God is going to help me write this exam. I have kabashed. I have prayed. If you finish kabashing and you finish praying and you refuse to read, Mm, sorry, it will be your name. So there are things that God should do for you and there are things that you will have to do for yourself. So quit being irresponsible. Especially we believers, many of us Christians, we are always leaving this work to God. We are always leaving this for God. You come to church and you pray. When you finish praying for finances, Think of what you can do to get money. When you finish praying for finances, think of how to uh, open other streams of income. Think of opportunities, things that you can do, value that you can give in exchange for money. Think of a good that you can give. Think of a service that you can give in exchange for money. This is how money comes. Because I always tell you that money is, a, is current. It's called currency because it flows like current. If you are doing something, if you are giving that value, money will flow in exchange for value. So wake up, wake up, wake up wherever you are and begin to do something. Quit being irresponsible. Many of us want to just sit back, relax and be taken care of. Who is the person who is going to take care of you? You have to do something about it. So it's not about just relax and be taken care of. There is a role for you to play. So quit being irresponsible. So those are the few things thoughts i decided to share with you today on checkpoint i hope they have been a huge blessing to you i want you to subscribe to our youtube channel and click on the notification button when you do this you'll be able to get current videos that we share on checkpoint i am rooting for you i believe so much in the potentials you carry and i'm just here to help you fulfill your god ordained purpose i can't wait for you to share your testimonies i can't wait for you to become the very best version of yourself i'm just here to make it better so please keep subscribing keep uh liking our videos keep sharing on all your social media platforms invite your friends your relations your associates your neighbors even after this video is done please make sure that you send this video to somebody because it will still be a blessing to them until i come your way again keep making a positive indelible mark in the lives of people and on the sands of time i love you so much bye bye
Hi everyone, I hope you are blessed by that message. All right, so I want you to just go ahead and support us. If you are led, go ahead and just sow into the account right on the screen. And I know that as you do that, God will bless you big time. Because of the seeds you are sowing, you will be able to reach a wider audience on different platforms. So please do well to sow that seed and God will bless you. Love you.